What constitutes the value of a player's performance in Valorant? In traditional sports, statistics have been streamlined to a few key values that measures an individual's performance to a well-known standard. Take basketball, for example. There is a lot of surface-level statistics that a casual viewer can easily understand, things like points, assists, and blocks, and you can assume the guy with the highest points per game is often the most valuable. But there are more advanced statistics, things like triple doubles, having double digits in points, assists, and rebounds. So when some guy averages a triple double over the course of an entire season, a feat only ever accomplished by one other guy ever, you can assume this guy is pretty valuable. Then there are the highest level of stats, a combination of weighted inputs to convey a player's contribution to their winning. The player efficiency rating or PER was developed by John Hollinger in an attempt to sum up the player's efficiency in a single number by taking into account all of the positives and negative aspects of their play. This is a widely accepted and pretty good estimate of a player's value, so when you look at the guys with the highest efficiency throughout their career, you would say these guys are pretty valuable. But how does this translate? To Valorant. Valorant has no such standard of analysis. Not only is the frequency of play so variable from tournament to tournament, but there is such a small sample side with only a year and a half at play that there's no way to give a good estimate. But as someone who just loves the game and can't catch every single pro match, I often look to the stats to see how teams and players played, trying to gain a better understanding of why a team may have won or lost. Many stats in Valorant focus on damage, but having an amazing individual performance doesn't always come from offensive presence alone. Is there a way to account for the non-tangibles in Valorant, things like smart playmaking and teamwork through stats alone? What would even go into a value stat in Valorant? And more importantly, will this finally answer the question as to why TSM can't win? Welcome back to another episode of Off The Dome. My name is Dominic, and today I'm going to open the conversation as to what goes into rating a player's value. And more importantly, who is the most valuable player in Valorant right now? When taking a look at the numbers side of Valorant, we first need to look at, well, the numbers. The website I use and I think most people use in the Valorant community is VLRGG. It is a hub for all matches and stats and gives more of an analytical insight into Valorant. But in getting these numbers, I could not do it alone. I want to give a huge shout out to Thomas on Twitter who helped me a lot in gathering this data and basically made this video possible. He's a writer and analyst for Run It Back GG, and he runs a much, much more thorough and, and significantly better articulated weekly report using statistics to outline the player and team of the week. If you're into analytical content, please go check out his stuff. It is super, super insightful. With the infrequency of play in Valorant, it's hard to judge the players and teams over a large time span. When I first thought of this video, I wanted to see if I could take into account all players to see if I could generate the most valuable players in Valorant from the whole world, but it's just not feasible at the moment. Players are consistently improving and the meta is constantly changing, so instead I decided to focus on a more recent subset of data to lay the foundation for potential future applications. I decided to stick with these stats from players who participated in the NA VCT Stage 1 Open 1, which was the most recent big North American VCT tournament. This will limit the data to a pretty small sample size, and it will be based in North America and won't include some of the best teams like Sentinels, Envy, Cloud9, and 100 Thieves. And I know I called the video the most valuable player in Valorant, knowing that I'm only looking at a single tournament, but grow the fuck up. It's my video. This is not a dissertation I'm sticking my family on, it's just a fun exercise to give more insight into the statistical world of Valorant. There will be biases in the numbers, so I'll do my best to elevate them as they come. But with that being said, enjoy the show. First, we need to go over some of the more advanced stats that already give a good insight into individuals' performances, but I'll also tell you why these stats are not perfect for representing their overall value. KD is a simple stat. It is a number representing how many kills you get for every death you get. Crazy. There's a similar kills per round, but I like KD personally because it gives you points for doing the good thing, killing people, and punishes you for doing the bad thing, dying. Every player should expect a KD of about 1. This is saying that you are getting on average 1 kill for every time you die, making an even game when you die. Role players are usually averaging around this number, a little bit over, but duelists and initiators are tasked specifically with getting kills, and thus more often average higher than 1.0. While a high KD usually implicates an impressive individual performance, it is not directly tied in the ultimate goal of Valorant, which is to win the rounds. Looking at KD from the turn, we can see that Zelsus actually tops the KD with an impressive 1.8, with other impressive players like Wardell, 
cryo cells and effies all alongside them. But this is where the first bit of bias and misrepresentation comes in. Effies is not necessarily known for his frags, and I'm kind of framing this as the frag stat. Instead, his high kitties contributed to his insanely low number of deaths. He is surviving on average way more than everybody else. There are other factors that goes into the weight of each kill, and thus, to fully understand a KD and get the full perspective of the stat, we need to talk about the performance stats next. In VLR, you can see team's performance stats only on individual game interfaces, which also meant to get the stat, I had to do it manually. This goes over multi-kills and clutches and the number and types of them. This right here is why KD does not directly paint the full story of a player's performance. If a player averages a 1.0 KD by trading for a 4v4 situation every single time, they're providing significantly less value than someone were to have a consistent set of multi-kills, creating 4v3 scenarios or 4v2 scenarios, because each of those contributes way more to a round win than the former. By totally multi-kills, applying a modifier to them and dividing them by the total number of rounds, Cryocells again has by far the most impactful rounds than any other player. This is because of his insanely high number of multi-kills and low number of rounds. Similarly, clutches are the ultimate contribution to a round win because you, you have directly won the round through a gunfight. Rounds can be won much earlier from an impressive multi-kill, but it's not over till it's over. Similar to higher multi-kills, having an impressive multi-kill clutch scenario is weighted heavier because it's against the statistical odds that you actually do it. Clutches and clutch factor is much more difficult to accurately predict due to the limited set of data and the low number of opportunities to actually get these clutches. There's also no way to to determine the type of clutch opportunity offered in a given situation with the current data so this is basically just a rough estimate of clutch factor we can see an upwards trend with more opportunities given the higher number of impactful clutches but we do have a few standout players on the top we have the accrued boys pancakes and gucci clear ahead of everyone else followed by Hayes, Rossi, and Xander. All of these players are known for their tournament experience. Hayes coming off a long CSGO career, as well as the other boys known for their tier two grinding experience. Almost, almost like tournament experience helps in the clutch. Just saying, NA teams. Another important stat we need to consider is the first kills to first deaths. This is related to KD, but is significantly more impactful. Getting a first kill and not being traded means that your team gains a lasting advantage in the round, making it a 5v4 situation. Although there's no stat for unanswered deaths specifically, the first kill first death can give someone a good representation, but is significantly more biased towards entry figures because they are the ones most likely to take contact on attack. Unlike having a high KD, having a high first kill first death directly correlates to having early round advantages. Looking at the total first kills to first deaths, we can see that the most consistent entry fraggers of the entire tournament include household players like Wardell, Baby Bay, and Saya Player, as well as the outstanding performance once again by Cryocells. But even better than him, we have Som from NRG, as he leads NRG's impressive losers run to qualify for the closed bracket. NRG did play significantly more games than Cryocells and Xset, but we're just going to stick with the stat line. Again, notice that almost everyone on the list is an entry fragger for their respective teams, so teams that focus more on executes are to more likely to have a distribution of first kill first death, again showing the bias of playstyle in these stats. Nonetheless, it's pretty interesting. The last stat I want to talk about is the cast stat, or kills, assists, survive, or trade percentage. This is the closest thing Valorant has to an efficiency stat. As if you do any one of these things, you are providing some sort of value to the team. The issue of the cast stat is the lack of weight being placed on various actions. Getting kills, assists, and surviving the round would be equally as powerful as if you were to just survive the round. The cast stat is heavily biased towards teams that are winning or stomping lower teams, although it is super interesting to look at as to see how efficiently members are working within their own team. Having a look at the highest casts from the tournament, we can see that no one can match the efficiency of the V1 guys. Zelsis taking the top spot with 90% cast and three other members also being within the top five. Is this biased because they won all of their sets? 100%. Dre is great at the game, but he did not perform better than Cryocells because he has a higher efficiency. I will point out the consistency of V1 is interesting though, as even other dominant favorites of the tournament like Xset was not as statistically efficient as them. V1 is clearly performing a more one for all style as their team's collective cast is by far the highest of the entire tournament. V1 is a team that is constantly innovating and by these stats alone, definitely 
keep an eye out for them. All right, we got a little sidetracked with the data, but let's get into the main point of the video. What goes into a player's individual value to a team? The methodology of the previously mentioned player efficiency rating in basketball is this. They wanted to find a number that measures a player's productivity per minute and increases with actions that are positive towards the productivity while decreasing with actions that are negative towards the productivity. If we extrapolate this to Valorant, we can break this down with actions that contribute positively and negatively to productivity in the game on a per round basis. Positive actions would include things like kills, assists, first kills, multi kills, clutches, and player efficiency, i.e. the cast. The negatives of the game, of course, are just deaths and first deaths. What we can do is apply different statistical weights on the different actions, i.e. single kills will weigh more than assists, multi kills will weigh more than single kills, etc and divide it by the total number of rounds played or opportunities to find the overall value. After a little tinkering, I think I found a pretty good balance of player values that doesn't overvalue just purely kills, but also takes into account their other contributions to the win as a whole, like assists and clutches, in a stat that I'm going to call the value per round or the VPR. I've generated the VPR for players that have participated in the North American VCT Open 1 to find out who statistically was the most valuable player of the tournament, and the results may shock you. This is the list. Now, before we go any deeper into the analysis of the top three, let's take a brief look at the rest of the top 10. As we look at this list, we can immediately see a lot of top players as expected to be in the tournament. The NRG boys had an amazing run at the tournament, losing to Excess, but taking down teams like Rise, KCP, Knights, and Ambox on their way to qualify. Each of their members provided significant value to win those games. You, Android, and Som all placed within the top 10 most valuable players at the tournament. This is likely due to their impressive stat lines, but also additional value that got them, that kind of pushed them over the edge into the top 10. Som had the best first kill, first death ratio in the tournament. Android had some amazing clutches, and Yui had one of the most efficient KDs in the tournament. With all these factors, Along with their already impressive skill, they were able to qualify for the next close because of the pure consistency of their entire team. We also see other familiar entry fraggers like Second and Saya Player, both which are some of the best entries in North America right now. Very impressive first kill, first death. Very strong in the fragging power. They definitely deserve to be here. But the one that kind of surprised me was Kompeki from Acru all the way at the top. While Kompeki isn't at the top of any value field, he is very well versed in what he offers to his team. He is one of the best clutch percentages, he is also one of the most consistent multi-killers, and is above average on assist score. All these different aspects of the game contribute to him being one of the most valuable players at the tournament, dropping him solidly in the top 10. The last player I want to mention is TSM's very own Wardell coming in at 4th. There has been a lot of talk as why TSM cannot win, and it seems like a Wardell is becoming the public scapegoat more and more every tournament. I'm here to say that based off the stats, Wardell is offering a substantial, substantial amount of value to his team, despite the results that they are having. Wardell has one of the most impactful offensive presences in the tournament, where he lacks in team value, having a low clutch percentages and a low number of assists per round, actually having the lowest assists per round out of the range I used. He makes up for in raw firepower. He is in the top 10 of almost every single major kill stat based off of solely off his impressive opping abilities. I'll look more into TSM and his stats going to open 2 is actually going on as I'm recording this, but Wardell's pure ability at the game is not a question. Just please win! Oh my god. Alright, let's get to the top 3. In third, we have Zelsus from V1. Despite not being the main firepower on his team, Zelsus played like an efficiency machine. He had the highest cast percentage out of anyone in the tournament, with the highest KD and the highest assists per round, and it wasn't even close. This combination of stats is important to recognize because it means that on all bases, he was creating value for the team. Although version 1 didn't have much trouble working their way through the bracket, giving them a little more of a boosted stat, the consistency of Zelsus throughout the whole tournament was incredibly solid, placing second or third every single match. Zelsus being this high on the list shows that consistency of play can provide more value than just having some incredible frag moments. In second, and this one's a little shocking, is cryo cells from Xset. By the eye test alone, you could tell that cryo cells is cracked. He has only been playing with Xset for a short while, this being his first tournament, but he is already cementing himself as one of the best duelists in North America, and I'm not smoking reefer. His stats back up his legendary performance this tournament. He topped the charts in kills per round, and second most first kill first death just behind Som, and has the highest percentage of multi-kills 
by far. He's amazing at creating opportunities on the entry to get kills without subsequent trades. He is the best offensive presence at the tournament, even trumping Wardell, when TSM's roster is literally based around Wardell's offense. Xset's roster saw success outside of his individual play, as even Zekin was in the top 10 most value. Where Cryo falters though is in his efficiency. He has an average cast of about 77, a mediocre clutch percentage, and a low assist per game. But that's more due to the role he plays. For his first outing on a new team, Cryocells has proved that he is one of the best new pickups of any org this stage. But I hate to say it, there was apparently one better pickup. The most valuable player of the NAVCT Stage 1 is Xander. Xander is version 1's new member, also coming from the Sora roster, Cryocells came from it as well, and replaced Odorous on the version 1 roster. It is also his first tournament and he has exceeded all expectations set out for him. Despite all offensive records being set by Cryocells, in second place just behind them was Xander. Second place in average combat score, second in kills per round, second in multi-kill values, but did I forget to mention that he's on smokes? That's right, it's not even his job to be the main firepower for his team, but he is beating most duelists at their job, very much Nats-esque. Xander has one of the highest clutch impacts of the tournament and puts up stupid numbers in assists, all while doing it with an above average efficiency of 87. I know it's weird to think that I'm saying that Xander offered more value to his team than Cryocells did, but Xander performed at a top level in nearly every single measurable category not just providing an immense amount of offensive value, providing providing value in playmaking, clutching, and theoretically winning more rounds as a result. This is the list that I have generated for the top 10 most valuable players from the most recent VCT tournament. Is it a perfect list? No. Will this mean that these players and teams will continue to operate at this level? Not necessarily. Was there such a small sample size that a good day or a bad day completely changes the results? Definitely. So why did I do this? Because I think that Valorant is so interesting. That a player's kills or deaths doesn't always lead to team wins, but sometimes it does. What goes into a win in Valorant is the grand mysterious question. If we knew, we could just maximize out that stat, but we don't. So trying to theoretically say, how does a play provide value? Can it be compared on the same metric? Is all just an exercise. I get this question a lot in the comments asking if I could do some sort of analysis of Valorant gameplay launder style. And I'm sorry to say, but I don't have anywhere close to the authority to do that. I am just another Valorant shitter. There are aspects of the game that I cannot possibly comprehend um, by watching the game itself, by watching pros play, it goes right over my head. But looking at these stats, I can understand a little more about the players and how they work within the teams from a results perspective. I want to provide you with a different perspective on the game, my perspective on the game. And I feel like by doing a video like this, I'm trying to find how a team can generate value it's just one way I can do that. And as always, thank you for watching. I want to thank you so much for watching. This one took a long time and a lot of time out of my studying schedule, so I'm going to be a little quiet over the next few days as I get ready for midterms. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you got this far, dude, like the video. <laughs> Come on. Uh, and subscribe if you want more Valorant esports content. And also, just so you know, I have a Discord community where we talk about all things esports, watch party supporting players, etc., it's a great time. Go join if you want to. I also have a Twitter where I've actually posted a thread with a few extra stats. So go like and retweet if you think it's cool. That'd be awesome. Anyways, thank you again so much for all the support I've been getting recently. I can't wait to make more videos and more banger content. But please have a good one. I'll see you later. Peace.